I don't think I've ever received more messages about commenting on a video than I have for Jordan Peterson on Q&A Live. And if it wasn't the most requested video ever, I wouldn't have done it because watching Q&A is worse than being in a NAM camp. I would honestly prefer physical torture than watching that show. My thoughts on it is bring back the verdict. It's so much better listening to what Jackie Lambie and a footy player think about ISIS than it is a bunch of pompous twats from private school who did the debate club too much and think, well, my skills aren't transferable to the real world. Oh, we'll force tax dollars to make them transferable and recycle shitty opinions that everyone's heard a million times before that we got a lot of likes on Twitter for. So essentially, you're paying for a state-run Twitter that is curated. Mad. Finally, it seems like the ABC gets what is happening on the net even slightly because they've invited Jordan Peterson on to answer the exact same questions he's been asked for the last five fucking years! I couldn't watch the whole thing because again, it is psychological torture. This is worse than waterboarding. But I watched the two major clips and a bit surrounding it to get some context. Let's go through them. Hi, my question is also for Peterson. And while I very much stand with the Im women's advocates in the room, my question is sort of on a different topic. No one cares. Just ask the question. You have a whole lot of uh, fans or former fans, kind of so-called now uh, ex-lobsters, uh, people like uh, Brendan Schiff. Um, and a lot of uh, these people talk about your, you have very simple answers to complex questions. Smug and terrified at the same time. I don't know how they pull it off, but it is a Hiroshima of annoyance. You look at the extortionate pr uh, housing market, the precarious gig economy, like things that are well out of our control. So I want to know, what is your answer uh, to young people for some of the really big uh, f uh, problems facing humanity. Right, so Jordan Peterson is expected to have very specific answers to Australian centric problems. Yeah, there's global warming, that affects everyone, but the housing affordability crisis? What's your opinion on this nuanced economic anomaly in Australia? Why does Jordan Peterson have to have an opinion on everything that's ever happened? Everyone always springs him on this stuff. You haven't talked about child soldiers yet? Yeah, he probably shouldn't. He's a psychologist. Like, you talk all this much about uh, individual responsibility. Most of us are never going to be able to afford uh, to have all of these assets to have responsibility over. So what is your advice beyond banal comments like, clean your room? Jeez. You can feel your own soul going, can I go to heaven yet? I'm done with this world. The fear. The fear in her eyes. You know that she regrets saying that instantly. She clearly doesn't take any of Jordan Peterson's advice to heart and dismisses it as simplistic. Well, yeah, all self-improvement advice is simple, but it's not easy because it takes consistent commitment to fulfill the bare requirements of what self-improvement teaches. This is why when Jordan Peterson gives a very logical answer, which essentially boils down to, if you're insane, don't have an opinion on the world or seek office because your ideas will be insane. This is the same people as like, I don't know, anti-vaxxers, people that are really on the fringe of society forcing their way into politics. How dare they? They don't even have a good relationship with their kids. Why do they get to have a say on family services? Well, you know, it's actually rather difficult to answer a question that ends with your comments are banal politely. This is what's so refreshing about Jordan Peterson. He's really out of that Twitterati mob, but they're always inviting him on to try and get him, but using the exact same tactic, which again proves his point, because that is the definition of insanity. Just insane people being like, we'll get him this time by asking the same fucking question. But it's so good that he just sits there very seriously and just goes, what you just said is fucking mental. Essentially what she's inferring is that anything that Jordan Peterson says, which is the basic principles of self-help, have no merit to society whatsoever, which is completely untrue. That man has fixed the psychology of probably millions of people across the world now. That is of great net benefit to the planet. Having functional human beings functioning in society, as opposed to this chick here going, I don't do simplistic, Uber eat. I would consider that more of an opinionated personal and political statement than actually a question. 
So why don't you try reformulating that so that there's an actual question there? What is your Classic ABC, despite the fact that the vast majority of the population clearly agrees with Jordan Peterson. Look, 20,000 likes, less than a thousand dislikes, and yet the Twitter comments they show is like, <laughs> triggered. When you talk about you need to be individually responsible, but when there are things that are so far out of our control, like climate catastrophe, like the precarious job economy, like you know, the They're economic not as far crisis, out of your what, what, is, you what, think. Is, what is your answer? And on top of this, just, just the fact that she goes like, it's completely out of my control. Control. You know that she leaves the house with her lights on. You just know she does. Do you think you're worse off than your grandparents? I uh, think that Jordan, once again, we're not going to cross-examine our <laughs> questioners. Why? Let him have at her. She deserves it. She's the one that needs to be taught a lesson, not Jordan Peterson in this. I thought this show was called Q&A. The argument, I think, is that individual responsibility does not change um, the climate, does not fix the problem that needs global collective responsibility. Who ever said it does? Did Jordan Peterson ever say that personal responsibility is going to fix climate change? No, what he's saying is if you are in yourself personally functional as opposed to a dysfunctional human being, you will be in a better position to help society in general. They're sitting there just going like, personal responsibility has no merit. Everyone else should do things except for me. Not suggesting in the least and have never suggested that there's no domain for social action. I'm suggesting that people who don't have their own houses in order should be very careful before they go about reorganizing the world, which happens in many ways. <laughs> This is how you know someone has lost the argument when all they have as a response is this. <laughs> Moving on to clip number two because everyone was going, how shit is Terry Butler? I was going to vote Labour before that, but now because she's annoying, I'm not going to do it. If you're a proponent, for example, of equality of outcome, of quotas, then you de facto accept the proposition that it's the group identity that is primary, and there's all sorts of dangers that are associated with that that far outweigh whatever good you're likely to do. Or maybe you just think that representative democracy should be representative. Mm. Maybe you just think that women should be equally represented in the decision-making fora of our nation. Maybe that's really just about having proper equality in a body that's meant to be representative. Isn't it interesting that the only identity group that she wants represented in Parliament is women? I wonder why. See, the thing is, she doesn't, for instance, want there to be less lawyers in Parliament, which there's probably more lawyers than there are men in Parliament. All of them are fucking lawyers, but she's not advocating for that. She's not advocating for different classes to be in politics. So again, it is just the elites now with this little flavour of the month going, oh, well, you know, I want my little nepotistic ticket ride into being a corporate CEO to be just as valid as a man's. That's all they care about, as he points out. They don't care about brickies. They don't care about the inadequacies in all dangerous jobs being done by men. And why should they? It's just that men want to do that job more. If you are actually concerned with quotas, what you should be looking for is getting rid of nepotism. That's what they're always saying. They're saying quotas don't work, but diversity does. You know what that means? It means that people that aren't given a free ride in life, which is I think about 80% of people in the corporate world in Australia alone, it's always just based around whoever mummy or daddy was, but you never see them push for that. It's the same thing in the ABC, when they always hire all these people from entertainment sectors going, oh yeah, we just want more women here. Yeah, but women that you know that you owe their parents parents a favour. That's who gets those jobs. I'm not one of these people that are just like, women stuck at comedy, problem in touch. I think that Judith, Lucy and Joan Rithers RIP were hilarious. But the reason they're hilarious is because they actually deserve the position. When you arbitrarily chuck people in like Amy Schumer, you get Amy Schumer. The best meme I ever saw that sums up politics today was Republican. It's cool for 10 people to control 50% of the world's wealth. Bernie supporter. Um, no it's not. Hillary supporter. And half those people should be women. Terry Butler reminds me of these people. Your Malcolm Turnbull types who really aren't in politics for anyone but themselves and their own advancement. Having said that though, I wouldn't care if she was a serial killer I'm still voting for Terry Butler if she's in my electorate. You're not voting for people and their personality. This is not Big Brother. This is politics. You're voting for a machine 
that runs the country. She is on the side of workers, while the Liberal Party is on the side of big business. People are constantly writing to me, you gotta call out Jordan Peterson for his tweet, or, oh my god, Van Baden wrote a very bad ham article. No, I'm not calling out Van Badham. Van Badham is doing more good for this world than the vast majority of humanity. She is the only person in the mainstream media that sticks up for the institution that made Australia really great, unions. As soon as she mentioned unions on Q&A, Tony Jones just goes, oh, no, 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 we're not doing advertisements. Because there are a bunch of suckholes that do exactly what the Liberal Party wants, which is demonize the unions nonstop. Jordan Peterson saying, take more responsibility for your life. That is a really important, powerful, message. It's the same thing with Van Batten. She's saying, if you're concerned about these big issues, you've got to join your union. It is, as I said before, lobbyists for workers. Just like how Big Pharma has lobbyists, just like how the mining industry has lobbyists in the ear of politicians, if we didn't have unions or weaker ones like we do in America, those big companies would be winning a hell of a lot more fights like they do in America. That's why you've got to join your union. Van Badham is constantly sticking up for them, probably at huge detriment to her own career. But because she sits there every now and then, it's just like, yay, girls. Sunrise is like, oh yeah, we'll film her because she's talking about girls, you know? But she sneaks that information in. She's very clever. I think that Van Badham is one of the most important voices in the public sphere at the moment. So no, I'm not going to shit on her. She's actually doing a good job for society. What are you doing? And to prove it, look, this is her opening statement. It was the most sensical thing that was said in the entire hour. I'll leave with this. Come see my show in Melbourne. John Howard really sucked. Oh my God, you couldn't guess that from my content. Pay money for it. And it's neoliberalism which has smashed communities. It's neoliberalism which has made consumption and material acquisition dominant values in society. It's neoliberalism that has destroyed the workplace and made jobs insecure and made our experience of economy so unstable. If people are feeling disenfranchised, if men feel disenfranchised, please let me reassure you that women feel disenfranchised as well because we are all living in this destabilised economy and we are all suffering from that kind of consumer ideology. Please share and comment below. Come in.